The filter comes off. I'm a rock and roller, so the filter's coming off. But, uh... Oh, got a little Oh, I got one. My name is uh, Stephen Kyle Thompson in the, the scumbag rock and roll community. I'm known as uh, Colonel Seabass McQueen. It started as a vicious joke. I couldn't stop with it, but uh, I am uh, I'm the uh, original bass player and founding member of uh, Three Quarter Slug, which was a uh, of course, a scumbag rock and roll band from uh, Outer Banks of North Carolina. We were uh, we started in about '99, something about like that. But uh, we went through multiple, you know, 15 members in 13 years, some about like that. But uh, anyway, we uh, we had opened up for the Murder Junkies. I want to say in about 2008 maybe 2009. I know I'd, I'd already lost my eye by that time. I only have one eye. This peeper's all uh, plastic, but uh, opening up for the Murder Junkies, it was at the, uh, at the Half Shell in uh, Virginia Beach, which is actually the uh, Ocean View area, uh, or Chicks Beach. Chicks Beach? And, um, hello. But, uh, but yeah, we were opening up for the Murder Junkies there, and uh, the other couple of bands, they were, it was my band, Three Quarter Slug, the Murder Junkies, and two other local bands who were all a bunch of 17-year-old uh, kids wearing the mohawks and the, uh, you know, the tartan tights, claiming that they were old school. I don't even think that any of them had had a... Uh, a heroin addiction or anything at that point, but um, uh, we uh, we got to play with them. They they uh, they were all really cool. You know, they were a bit standoffish at first. You know, when we introduced ourselves when we first got there, but uh, you know, we just chatted with them for a little bit. Uh, after we did our set, you know, I think they were kind of impressed with what they did, with what we were doing at the time. You know, we were all we weren't trying to uh, fit the scene, you know, we we were just, uh, you know, playing what we do. We weren't trying to fit the uh, fashion profile or anything, but, uh, uh, and what made me feel good was they had dedicated our set to us because they felt as if we were actually fulfilling the, the old school punk rock, rock and roll vibe. But uh, upon completion of our set, you know, we hung out with him for a little bit. Merle, great guy, really cool, you know, I just wanted to bullshit with him. I didn't ask him anything about his brother or any of that, because I know he gets tons of that. You know, of course, you know, everybody wants to know, well, was Gigi really like that? Was it an all an act, this, that, and the other? But, you know, we just talked and, uh, you know, hung out and bullshitted. And uh, after, uh, you know, they played, you know, we hung out and drank some beers. Uh, another cool part about that is uh, during uh, their set, Dino, Dino Sex, the naked drummer, I guess he's gotten a lot of hell about playing naked uh, in the past, so he left his pants on. You know, he took his shirt off and everything else, but while we were standing to the side, you know, watching him play, He's playing, but he wasn't looking at anything, and I got over there and looked, and uh, they're playing, and he's got his drum kit, he's playing, you know, regular, you know, right-handed, but looking over this way, I look over, and he's got a stack of about three or four different uh, nasty porno mags, like, uh, like Nugget, and, uh, you know, penthouse, like the ones that shows the nasty stuff, like pregnant chicks getting ass fucked and cum on their face, and, uh, you know, shit like that, Ch chicks pissing in their own face and mouths and things like that. And he's playing the whole time and flipping pages with his foot, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, fucking A, right on, that's cool as shit. And, uh, you know, they finished their set and everything, and we were all hanging out bullshitting and all that, and uh, 
I finally, I, you know, I got to go and talk to Dino for a minute, and, um, I'm like, you know, Dino, man, I've been a big fan, you know, I've been listening to you guys since I was 13, 14, and the guy's a little out there. I mean, I don't know if you've ever, any of y'all ever seen the, the Hated uh, documentary or anything like that. You could tell he was a little out there then, but the guy's a little out there. But, you know, I mean, we're all, you know, anybody in the scumbag rock and roll punk rock community, of course, they're a little out there. But, um... You know, we're hanging out bullshitting, and I'm like, oh, uh, well, before I get to all that, at the end of their set, you know, of course, Dino explained that uh, they get in trouble for him playing naked, so after they get done playing, he jumps up, and he does strip down, and he walks around for a minute, he takes his drumsticks and sticks them up his ass, and walks around and kind of flashes them at everybody and pulls them out and licks them and then he throws them out into the crowd you know just like uh for old time's sake you know so it, was a, it still had the original gg allen in the murder junkies vibe and i uh, also got to say the uh, the singer for the murder junkies now you know he was awesome you know of course you know it wasn't gg but he sounded like gg his heart was in it they put on an excellent show i was really glad to play with them but uh at the end of the night before we all parted ways uh i was talking with dino i was like you know man i love you guys man it was great and he comes over and kisses me straight on the mouth <laughs> And I was a bit taken aback. I think he even wanted a little bit of tongue. You know, I don't know. I mean, you know, each his own, you know, different smiles, different styles, but uh, that ain't my gig, you know. But I guess I felt kind of special, you know. Dino kissed me on the fucking mouth. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, I'm, I felt flattered, I'll put it that way, you know. I'm completely hetero, too, by the way. This is my beautiful future wife, Sarah, here. But anyway, that's my little uh, small murder junkies antidote, so cheers.